So firstly, strength conditioning coaches, we like to profile and develop what we call a needs analysis. This is critical in that it helps us make sound decisions for the athletes that we're working with. Obviously, working in a large group, you may have maybe managing a group of up to 45 athletes. Uh, we don't need to individualize every single detail, every rep, every set, every exercise that they're doing. There is value and research on um, being able to get the athlete to do as much of what the group's doing as possible. As we know with team-based athletes, uh, that sense of belonging and being part of a group is really, really important to them uh, for their level of motivation and also for their intent point of view. As soon as you bunch a, a group of athletes together, they're going to get competitive, they're going to lift a bit heavier, they're going to run a bit faster. Uh, so the quality of training is definitely enhanced. So we don't want to remove the athlete from the group where possible. However, there's definitely um, some need for individualizing and slightly tweaking some of the program. Our key strength exercises, so ha having an understanding of how well they can produce max force in the squat, deadlift and, and bench press. Um, so you can measure those movements if you haven't got force decks, or you can measure some isometric testing with a isometric mid-thigh pull and a back squat iso to get a, get a good understanding of how they're producing force through different limbs. Um, and that can give you an understanding on how well they're tracking their, their strength development. We want to have an idea of their uh, abduction strength or their glute med strength ability to, and, uh, and ability to externally rotate at the hip. Uh, and as I mentioned, their adduction is strength and what's the ratio between those two. Um, so we want to have a, a clean ratio both from uh, your ability to generate force through your groins as well as your glutes um, through external rotation but also we want to have a see what's the symmetry like between limbs. Now we know with AFL footballs, there's going to be an asymmetry. Uh, hip flexion and hip extension, another couple of really important. So as you can see with Australian rules football, because of the nature of the sport, so demanding on the body, particularly uh, on the lower uh, legs around the hips, we want to make sure that we've got a, a good information around uh, how the athlete is producing force, and any potential chinks in the armor that they need extra work to do um, to pick up that area. Um, so it's not putting either that body part at risk or other areas at risk. Um, so that would be the more clinical test. Then we want to have an understanding of how they move. So just simply filming them when they're sprinting, their change of direction at, at maximal speed and under a reactive component, so doing some agility uh, or just simply playing the game in a small-sided game of football, uh, how, how well they receive contact and uh, tackle an opponent. Uh, having a reactive um, strength index testing. So if you do have four steps uh, doing like a single leg drop jump to get an idea of how well they can absorb force um, and um, excel and also generate force. Um, so looking at the mechanics of that, um, are they favoring one side? Are they not as confident on one side? And then you can put in some drills to be able to make sure that we've got good plyometric ability uh, and you, you've got good foot stiffness um, that's going to carry through on you know, reducing your contact time when you're sprinting or change direction on the field, uh, which is just going to reduce the amount of load going through the body. So making sure we've got a good understanding of how well they can absorb force at a, at a fast velocity. In terms of promoting for this week's podcast, I really liked the Marketing School, Neil Patel and Eric Sue's podcast. It was episode 2376, all about how to maximise your search engine optimization. So what they talked about was not just always spending your time on creating new content, but actually enhancing the content that you've currently created using Google Analytics, research the the posts, the blog posts on your website that um, have taken a hit over the last year and boost them with some new fresh content. So you don't need to create a new post, just simply spend time. And Neil actually mentioned how 90% of his team's time is spent on uh, increasing the value of his current content uh, and that, and that, maximizes the views on that on that content so oh, that's something that really resonated with me oh, for the last couple of years all i've done is focus on creating new content but uh, but ultimately if your content isn't being seen there's no point creating new content so spend more time and energy creating more value 